and on Fulton Street with Brother Hill and then again with Brother Fisher. So I am thankful that he is here. He told me if I found a saw and a bow, he might play us a song sometime. So I guess I need to find a saw and a bow. But Brother Shrek Ice, it's an honor to have you and Sister Shrek Ice with us. In fact, before he comes, she's been under the weather battling uh, some sickness, and we all understand that with allergies and flu and everything going on. Can we just stand to our feet as Brother Shrek Ice gets ready to come? Let's pray for her. I want her to be able to enjoy her time here. Lord Jesus, we ask for your healing touch to reach down and touch Sister Shrek Ice. We're so honored to have them with us this weekend, Lord. And I do believe that we're going to receive some impactful teachings on the end time. You're going to let us know where we're at, Lord, what we need to be aware of. Make us more sensitive to the hour that we would not lay our treasures up in this world, but that, Lord, we would invest ourselves in the kingdom of God that our treasures may be laid up in heaven with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Can you put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap as Brother Shrek Ice comes tonight? Everybody say, God bless you, Brother Shrek Ice. Thank you, Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. God bless you. What a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord uh, again in this city been a while since we've been here but it's good to see all of you and um, all of the visitors that are here tonight and I do want to say uh, to Brother Bumgardner we certainly appreciate the invitation uh, to come and share some uh, teaching from the word of the Lord thank you sir uh, Brother Bumgardner is like one of our boys amen so we're we've known them for a long time known his uh, parents and his sisters uh, for a long time. Amen. It's, uh, it's just family. Amen. We're just family. And actually, we're all family. If you've been born into the family of God, we are family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, <clears throat> for us, it's a pleasure. My wife is not here tonight. She's much better, uh, but she didn't want to contaminate anybody. So she said, I'll stay one more night away, <laughs> and um, tomorrow night, the Lord willing, she will be here. Uh, <clears throat> I always miss her when she's not with me. Amen. You know, when you find a wife, <clears throat> you need to look for somebody you can't live without. <laughs> and I found her. Amen. I can't live without her. She's been an uh, inspiration to me and a help, a big help. I've drug her all around the world, and she stayed with me. Amen. <laughs> We've been to multiple countries and working for the Lord, and, and uh, she's been right there by my side. And I appreciate that. Hallelujah. Now, if any of you would like to move up just a little closer, you're welcome to. If you can't see the chart, I'll be using the chart quite a bit, uh, but uh, you're welcome to move up a little closer if you want to. Make yourselves at home. This is your church. This is your, your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I have some handouts. If I could get two or three young men to come and hand out. Uh, I think there's enough one. Brother Bumgarner, there's one, enough for one per person. Or for a married couple or how. Okay. Uh, we'll... Uh, if there's not enough, he said we can make some more. So, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. It's so good to see Sister Sawyer here. Uh, we're, we go back quite a ways. We taught um, Bible college. Brother Sawyer was an instructor there for several years, and, and we had uh, a chance to get uh, very close to them. And um, I'm sorry he is gone, but the Lord knows best. Amen. He knows uh, when our time uh, to come uh, comes to go. He knows when that is, and we just have to be ready to say, Okay, Lord, uh, your will be done. Amen. <clears throat> now tonight, <clears throat> as we get started, 
I'm going to have to move pretty fast because um, there's a lot of material to cover and uh, and I want to do the best I can to cover it um, that you can understand what we're teaching. Uh, we are talking about end time events, what is going to transpire in the very near future, the very near future. Amen. As we get closer uh, to his actual coming, we're beginning to see all of the scriptures just come together, uh, just dovetail and come together and show us the pattern. Uh, <clears throat> anybody who has knowledge of the scripture has heard about the rapture of the church. Now, when we say rapture, that word is not in the Bible. But there is the, the phrase to be caught up, a catching away. Uh, I like the Spanish Bible much better because it says arrebatar. And that means to snatch away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Arrebatar. Seremos arrebatados. We will be caught up. Uh, so when, you, when you're talking about a rapture, that is a catching away. Amen. A catching away. Uh, all true Christians believe that Jesus is coming back to take us with him. Amen. If you've got this hope, the hope of the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, Jesus, as he was being taken up into the heavens, um, <clears throat> The disciples watched him go, and then two angels came, and they said, uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, they said, Why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. So that is, that is one of the first promises we have after his catching away that he's coming back again. And, and there are many others that we'll be uh, using uh, uh, most of those or some of those in our lessons. So we know we are assured that the Lord will come back. He will come back. He is coming back. Amen. We don't know when, but we can narrow it down and know approximately. We can know that it is near, it is at the door. Amen. Now this, uh, this large uh, map chart I have behind me, uh, I've used this in several countries, in Bible schools, and it is a tremendous tool. Um, you're welcome to come up and look at it after service. If Brother Bumgarner thinks that's all right, you're welcome to look at it, uh, ask questions about it, uh, because that's why we're here. And uh, we, want, we want to explain it <clears throat> the best that we can. Amen. We know we are living in the last days. You can see the signs all around us. Now, <clears throat> the last days does not mean the end of the world. You have to understand that. The last days, when the, when the scripture talks about the last days, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 uh, verses 2 to 5, uh, Paul said, In the last days perilous times shall come. Now some of those may be uh, written on your chart or on your handout that I gave you. Uh, if not, you're, you can jot them down. Uh, I want you to notice uh, very quickly this handout that I gave you has a little drawing on it. And uh, it starts with the crucifixion. It's got a cross drawn on that timeline the church age, which is 2,000 years, the rapture, the tribulation, and then the Lord coming back with his saints, 1,000 years of peace, and then the great white throne judgment, uh, new heaven and new earth after that. So uh, we're, we're going to be dealing with quite a bit of stuff, quite a bit of material. So just uh, uh, fasten your seat belts and buckle on your spurs, and here we go. Amen, amen. We're going to have a great time. Uh, when you read the daily news, it's like reading prophecy right out of the scripture. The daily news, drought, 
<clears throat> famine, wars, killings, corruption among government leaders. Amen. Perilous times. That's what the Apostle Paul said would happen. Perilous times in the last days. <clears throat> When we talk about the end time, we're talking about the end of the Gentile dispensation. Uh, you remember what the, the, the scripture said? That the apostle Peter had said that the Lord was going to take out of the Gentiles a people for his namesake. Amen. So that is the church age. That's the church. He's taking out a people of the Gentiles. You say, well, does that not include Jews? Well, certainly, if they'll repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost. That's the way it started out on the day of Pentecost. But it wasn't but a few short years. The Apostle Paul said, I'm leaving these hypocritical Jews behind. I'm going to the Gentiles. And he opened churches all over Asia Minor. Uh, and from that point on, uh, you, today, I don't know of one single Jew. I'm sure there are a few who have received this gospel, uh, but you just don't hear of them uh, accepting this gospel. And the main reason is they do not accept Jesus Christ as Messiah yet. There will come a time when they will receive him, understand who he is, but right now they do not. So it will be a Gentile bride that the Lord is coming after. Amen. I like to say that we are living in the rapture generation. I hope I'm still alive when the rapture takes place. Hallelujah. Uh, but if the Lord were to call me away before the rapture, I still, I'll beat all of you. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so when you see the signs and the indicators all around us, we understand that we are in the bottleneck of prophecy. And that means, uh, you know, down here a bottle is, is larger uh, than the neck. And there were events that took place, but now it is starting to happen so rapidly and, and just being compressed down into uh, this end time scenario. Uh, amen. And, and it's happening fast. Uh, now, we don't know exactly when it will be, but it is happening. Mm, the rapture will take place place in the very near future we're not looking for the end time we are in the end time right now we are there and we are looking for uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah it's exciting to live in the end of the church age it's exciting to live uh, in this hour hallelujah uh, you can you and I very possibly will experience that moment of the rapture of the church, the catching away of the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> the world does not believe what I just said. The world does not believe it. The world uh, just, um, they think that it's just going to rock on and it's, it's going to get better. But I'm telling you, it's not going to get any better. There's not going to be peace on this earth until the Prince of Peace comes. And that's Jesus. Hallelujah. It's going to get worse and worse. That's what the Scripture indicates. Amen. Uh, there's, there are people who laugh at you when you talk about a rapture of the church. They say, that's preposterous. You mean that these humans are going to, uh, are going to be caught up? How in the world? Well, we understand because the Bible said in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, we're all going to be changed. And this old corruptible body will put on an incorruptible body. And this, then the scripture indicates that we'll have a body like unto his glorious body. Hallelujah. Otherwise, we could not be caught up in through the atmosphere. We would be burned up. Amen. Just like a rocket. I, I read the other day that there's a, there's a Chinese rocket that's a uh, satellite that's coming down uh, sometime between March and April. I'm not sure exactly when. They don't know when either. Uh, but some, there's, there's, a, there's a satellite that's circling and it's failing and it's coming down. It's losing orbit. And uh, it will. Some uh, are predicting that it will strike Michigan, fall into Michigan 
Who knows? And that's what would happen to us if we tried to go up in this physical body. But we're going to be changed. Hallelujah. Have that new body. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. The apostle Peter said it like this. Amen. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's the attitude of the world today. That's the attitude. Ha! We've heard that all of our lives and it hasn't happened. But we're getting closer and closer and closer. Every day is just another day closer to the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. They say, well, that's just a fable. That's just an old wives' tale. Amen. Um, just something the believers have come up with, you know, to scare people. Now, I'm, I'm not teaching these uh, subjects uh, in the next few uh, sessions to scare anybody. But I'll tell you this. If I were not living for God, I would become very, very concerned about where I'm living. Amen. Knowing the times, knowing that it is so close. Hallelujah. I wouldn't lose any time of getting right with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't make any difference in what the devil says because he likes to sow doubt in our minds. Does it really mean that? Are you sure? Uh, can, can, uh, can, we, uh, can we put that down in black and white? When is it going to happen? This is the, the devil. That's the enemy of our souls. Uh, he doesn't want us to believe. Uh, he wants, uh, uh, perhaps he wants the rapture to take the world by surprise. I don't know what his plan is. Uh, amen. So people won't be ready. But I'm telling you, those blood-bought, born-again believers, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready, amen, going up with a shout, hallelujah, hallelujah, because we know Jesus Christ is coming back. Now, there are two phases, this is what your handout says, two phases of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The first phase is when we will be caught up to meet him in the air. The second phase is when the Lord will return with all of his saints to the battle of Armageddon. Now, let's look at our chart here. The crucifixion. We might get a chance to go into Daniel's uh, 70th week, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. We'll, we'll, we'll see how far we get. But we're going to start this with the crucifixion. After the crucifixion, the day of Pentecost, 50 days after his resurrection, amen, the Holy Ghost was poured out for the first time. That's when the church started. The church age will consist of 2,000 years, which we are at the end of the 2,000 years right now. So 2,000 year period for the church age. John saw Jesus Christ in the midst of the seven churches or in the midst of the church. Amen. He saw him. Uh, you have the seven churches of Asia that are listed in the book of Revelation. Um, those, um, those, were, those were forerunners or examples of what was going to happen during a certain period of time during those 2,000 years. And then, at the end of those 2,000 years, this event called the rapture of the church is going to transpire. That's when he comes for his saints. This is when he comes for his bride, his church. Amen. He's coming at the end of that, that, that uh, period of um, uh, la época de la iglesia. I've, I've taught it so much in Spanish, sometimes I, I don't get my English right. Uh, but the, the age, the church age, the church age. He's coming at the end of that church age to take us away, to catch us out of. And then the second phase of his coming, because he's coming again, and a lot of people get it all mixed up. They, they kind of mix this, uh, this coming right here with his saints, with the rapture of the church. But there's two different events, two separate events. One is when he catches us away with him, to be with him uh, in, in, in eternity. And then he's coming back seven years later. This, this is a seven-year period of tribulation, or Daniel's 70th week 
corresponding to the ten toes of this image that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about. Um, and the Antichrist with ten horns. That's all included in this seven year uh, period. But he's coming back at the end to fight the Antichrist and the armies of the world in the battle of Armageddon to rescue Israel. We're coming with him. So if it were that this was the rapture of the church, where did he get his saints? Where did he get his saints? If he hadn't taken them up already, well, he has taken them up already. Right here, he has taken up his church. We're going to be caught up. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> All right, so you've got the two phases coming to meet him. We meet him in the air, and then he returns to the earth with his saints, and we'll be dealing with that uh, tomorrow night, the second phase. This is the first phase. Amen, amen. Now, <clears throat> I want you to understand that there are three different views of the second coming or the coming of the Lord. There is the pre-trib. When we say pre-trib, that's us. We who believe that Jesus Christ is coming back before the tribulation period, we call ourselves pre-tribbers. Pre-tribulation. There are some who believe he's coming back in the middle of that tribulation, three and a half years into the tribulation. And there are some who believe he's coming back in a rapture, I heard it explained by one. He said, oh, it's the, it's the ping pong effect. It's like hitting the ping pong ball. He's going to come take us up. And he said, how long does it take to eat a marriage supper? Three, four hours? And then we'll come right back with him to the battle of Armageddon. That's not what the scripture indicates. Amen. But there are, there are different views. Pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. Uh, and uh, we are pre-tribbers, hallelujah, believing that he could come at any moment, any moment. Praise God, praise God. So I, I don't want to just give you my ideas, my viewpoint, but I want us to look at what the Word of God says, the Scripture, because that's our handbook. And that's how we live for God. That's how we expect the blessings of God and the coming of the Lord. Praise God. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord together. He's coming for his saints. Now, Acts 1 and 1, I, I read that as we began. We do know that he is coming back. He promised to come back. The angel said he was coming back. He himself promised that he would come back. And we'll see that in just a moment. Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 35 to 37. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. That's, that's a further promise. Yet a little while. He's coming. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Jesus himself said it in John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. John chapter 14. It's on your, your handout that I gave you. 14 verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, listen to what he said. I will come again and... Receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's not talking about here. There ye may be also. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus is the highest authority in the universe. Because he is God manifest in flesh. He is, he is totally God. Hallelujah. I will receive you. This is talking to the church, to the saints of the living God. Those who have been born again of water and spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're going up to be with the Lord. Going up to be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 to 17. Paul said to the Thessalonian church, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That's the ones who have already gone on by the way of death, in Christ, those who have died in the faith, that we will not prevent them from being resurrected. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Sister Sawyer, you've got hope tonight. 
Hallelujah. Brother Sawyer's coming out of that grave. I'm sure there are many others who have, who have gone on by death from this assembly, from this congregation. Hallelujah. There's that great hope. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain. Notice what it says. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. What did it say? Caught up together with them. That's the dead in Christ that have been resurrected in the clouds. We're going to meet him in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm telling you, there's just one scripture after another that talks about the catching away of. Hallelujah. Being caught up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this event, the Lord does not come to the earth. Now, the, the difference in this coming and his second coming to the earth, he's actually going to come here and his foot, the Bible said, is going to be planted on Mount Olives right outside of Jerusalem. He's coming back to the earth. In the rapture of the church, he is not coming to the earth. We're going to go up to meet him in the air. That's the promise. Oh, hallelujah. That's the plan. He's coming back for his people he's not bringing his saints with him at this first coming he's going to catch us up to him at this coming he's bringing his saints with all of his saints with him praise god praise god so there are there is a difference and there's a lot of people that kind of get them intermingled and mixed up uh, but you've got to get it clear in your mind, amen, that there are two phases of his second coming to get his church and then to come back with his church. Praise God. <clears throat> uh, the Apostle Paul told us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 4, he said he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words that are not, uh, were not lawful or allowed for man to utter. Uh, apparently God gave the Apostle Paul visions and understanding of end time events because we have a good many scriptures from the apostle paul uh, that he had received from the lord amen he was the apostle to the gentile church he wrote uh, 14 books of the new testament uh, for instruction encouragement edification to the churches amen <clears throat> well that's 14 if you consider the book of hebrews some say he didn't write hebrews i believe he did so that's number 14. Praise God. But he wrote letters and, and this, these were admonitions and instructions how to live righteous, how to live holy, how to overcome evil and how to overcome the devil, how to love others and, and how to have a good marriage and just a lot of little details there. That's what Paul wrote. So he had a, he had a special insight in the Spirit because he said he was caught up to the third heaven. Amen. We only, have, uh, we only have three that we know of in the New Testament that were caught up. There was Paul, and then Peter talks about it. Then John was caught up, praise God, and received the revelation. Uh, but this is, uh, this is the word of the Lord, and he talks about the coming of the Lord in the clouds. Talks about all of these things for the church. But do you realize that not one single verse, not one single mention, of the church going through the tribulation period. Paul never, Paul never gets us ready. You got to get ready now. We're going through this tribulation. He never talks about going through the tribulation period. Amen. He talks about all the church age and how we ought to live for God and all of that uh, good stuff. Now, but he never talks about us preparing ourselves to go through a tribulation period. You know why? Because the tribulation period is not for the church. That tribulation period, and, and we'll be dealing with that perhaps on Sunday morning, but that is not for the church. Amen. He's coming <clears throat> back to catch us away. Praise God. You would think that Paul would have instructed us to get ready for it, but he didn't. He didn't. You know what the apostolic greeting was? Uh, uh, the greeting was in the early church. You know how they greeted each other? Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha in Spanish. Maranatha, which means the Lord is coming. Oh, they were looking for the coming of the Lord. 
the apostle Paul was looking for the come of the Lord in his day. It just wasn't time. Amen. It wasn't totally God's plan at that point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, they believed in the imminent return. Now, when you use the word imminent, that word imminent means he could come at this very moment. He could come five minutes from now. He could come this week, this month, this year. The imminent return. Or in other words, we're looking for the coming. We're looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's the imminent return that he could come at any moment. Any moment. <clears throat> So when, when some say, well, uh, he's, he's not coming until the end. That wouldn't be an imminent coming. We would know exactly because it's counted out in years, seven years. It's counted out in months. In fact, there is a division, three and a half years and three and a half years. It's counted out in months, 42 months and 42 months. It's counted out in days, 1,260 days to half and another 1,260 days to the end. You'd know almost to the day when the Lord was coming. But the Bible said that no man knows the day nor the hour. We believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. That he's coming back. Coming back for his people. Lord, would you come tonight? Oh, I'm so excited about I, I'd like for him to come tonight. I'm ready to go if he would come tonight. I hope you are. I hope that's your hope. Amen. I, I trust that that's where you've placed your confidence. Lord. I'm ready if you should split the clouds of glory and we should go up, amen, in the rapture, the catching away. I'm ready. I'm living my life like it should be lived. I'm living a repented life. I'm living, living a clean life. I'm living in holiness and righteousness, and I'm waiting on your return. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what the apostle Paul said. He said, um, the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which are alive. He was including himself. I heard one preacher say, well, Paul didn't believe in the imminent return of the Lord. He most certainly did, because he included himself. He said, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So yes, we know that the Apostle Paul <clears throat> believed in the imminent return. He was not waiting for a tribulation period. Paul was not waiting for seven years of tribulation to come on the face of the earth. He was ready to go up at the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. A shout so loud as to wake up the dead in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God with a shout. The voice of the archangel. The angels screaming it out. Hallelujah. And the trump of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. It's going to happen. It's coming. It's right down the road, my friend. It's going to happen just like the scripture says it's going to happen. Amen. Just like his first coming. It was prophesied 800 years before he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And it happened just exactly like the prophet said it would happen. This catching away of the bride, the church is going to happen just exactly like the scriptures tell us it's going to happen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52, the apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Now notice, that was he felt like the imminent return. We shall not all sleep. He thought the Lord was come, going to return in his day. But that wasn't his plan. Amen. But he knew it was going to happen. And, and that's what he said. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we, there he is again, shall be changed. Hallelujah. You can't get around the imminent return of the Lord. It's stated emphatically that he is coming back, praise God, at any time. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible talks about that he's coming in the twinkling 
of an eye. Now they tell me you can bat your eye ten times in one second. I've never counted that. I just read that account. Now whoever whoever came up with that said you can bat the eye can be bat batted ten times in one second. And that's how quick the coming of the Lord is going to be. It's not going to be a protracted thing. It's not going to be time for people to run to the church and, and call the preacher and, and the saints of God to come and pray them through at an altar. There's going to be time for that. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, abrir y cerrar de ojo. That's exactly what it says in Spanish. In the twinkling of an eye. Praise God. Praise God. Now, you, you folks are just ha don't look at me strange when I go off into Spanish. It's, sometimes it just happens that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we shall be caught up, we which are alive and remain. Now, let's see. Let's go on. Thank you, Lord. Can you imagine the scene around Wharton, Texas? When he comes, and the majority of this church is going up with him. You say, well, you don't think everybody in this church? Well, if everybody's got the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name, full of the Holy Ghost, yes, you're going up. But if you ain't got it, my friend, you ain't going up. That's, that's just that's the bottom line. You got to be saved. You got to be born again to see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some will be calling the pastor. Some will be calling the saints. Gone. Disappeared. Church empty. Just a few backsliders trying to, trying to find their way to God. It's going to be too late then. Hallelujah. There's no time to be backslidden. There's no time to be cold in your soul. There is no time to fool around because His coming is so near. So near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. No time to grab a hold of Mama's skirt. Well, I'm going to stay close to my mama because I know she's lived for God. And when the rapture happens, I'll just grab a hold of her skirt tail and, and I'll go up. Eh, it's not going to happen that way. You don't even have time to turn around. You don't even have time to flex your hand to get a hold of her skirt. It's going to happen so quick. Hallelujah. His coming is so near. That's why it is so very important to get ready and stay ready. You say, well, Brother Strzok, what if he doesn't come in another 10 years? Live for God the next 10 years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What if he comes today, tonight, tomorrow? You got to be ready. Got to be ready. Second Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 to 11. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, the day of the Lord here is not referring to the rapture. The day of the Lord is referring when he comes back to this earth. This is the day of the Lord. The rapture of the church is not the day of the Lord. He's just coming and almost secretly just pulling out the saints from this world. But this will be the day of the Lord. When the King of kings and the Lord of lords will come with all of his saints, hallelujah, to judge this world, to judge the nations, uh, set up his earthly kingdom, a millennial kingdom for a thousand years. That's going to happen. That's the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we know that the day of the Lord, uh, when they say peace and safety, and that's going to happen during the first part of this tribulation. In fact, the Antichrist, is coming. Have you all heard just recently that President Trump and, and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and, they, and, and the Palestinians are pushing toward a peace pact? Oh yeah, we've, we've read it in the news. We've heard it on the radio. Amen. That they're, they're going to sign a peace pact. And that's what this scripture is saying. They're going to say peace and safety, but sudden destruction will come upon them Amen, amen. But notice what he says in verse 4 of that same chapter, 1 Thessalonians 4, 
or five, I'm sorry, five and verse four, but ye brethren, speaking to the church now, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Praise God. Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day, that's speaking to born again believers, amen, those who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And here's the key verse now, verse number 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. There's another scripture. God has not appointed his church to the wrath. And I, I did hear a preacher say, well, this is not the wrath of God. I'm telling you, if you can say that after studying the book of Revelations and say, no, that's not the wrath of God. That's, that's the wrath of the devil. The devil doesn't have anything to do with what's coming down from heaven, the judgments of God. Oh, the devil's going to stomp through this earth for sure. His, his man, the Antichrist, will be right there, and, and there's going to be a lot of things happen. But the Bible said that we are not appointed to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying to the church. We are not destined for the tribulation period. We're not destined for the tribulation period. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We are not destined. Where did I stop at? Verse number 9. Verse number 10. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, and I don't think this is in your notes. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. And Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. This is the condemnation that's coming upon the whole world right here. And he said, now well, there's no condemnation for the church of God. There's no condemnation. Hallelujah. We can go home and lay our head on the pillow tonight. And if the Lord takes us and with a massive heart attack during the night, there's no condemnation. Oh, praise God. There's no condemnation. Why? Because we have been born again of water and spirit. Amen. We are looking for the coming of Jesus Christ when he comes back after his church. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the church is the bride of Christ. And the purpose uh, of this, uh, of the Lord, the pur purpose of the Lord is not to make His church go through all of this suffering. That's not God's plan. That's not destined for the church. You know who the tribulation period is for? First of all, it's for the Jews who have not recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah. It's to bring them to repentance. And then it is for the whole world. This tribulation period. This is when God is going to deal with this old world like it has never been dealt with before. Hallelujah. I don't want to get into my lesson on Sunday morning because we're going to be talking about the tribulation and all that transpires, but I'm here to tell you there are some horrible things that are going to come from God himself and even from the devil as he rages and stomps through this world. So many things are going to transpire. I don't plan on being here. Uh, I'm telling you, he's not putting us through the tribulation some say, well, he's, he, he's, he's got to chastise the church to make sure it's ready. Well, I have a question. What about all these precious saints of God that haven't gone through a tribulation? They're dead now, gone. They didn't go through a tribulation period, but they're still going to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah, they're going to rise first. No, the Lord does not have the tribulation or the church destined for the tribulation. Uh, we have any newlyweds here? How many has been married less than a year? Less than two years. Three. Ah, you old timers here, huh? 
But you know when a young man marries a young lady, how does he treat that young, or how should he treat that young lady? The, the Apostle Paul said he ought to love her like his own body. Love her and cherish her. And, and that's what they promise to do when they stand before the preacher. I'll, I'll take care of this young lady and I'll, I'll love her. And uh, Is there any man that will beat his poor little wife Unmerciful, unmercifully, <laughs> amen, and, and say, well, I've got to beat her so she'll be a good wife. Now, you, you might find that in the Muslim world, but you won't find that in a Christian world. Ought not to be. Amen. <laughs> Preach it, Brother Shrekhaz. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir, that didn't cost you anything. But that's exactly... The Lord's not going to put His church through a period of suffering and chastisement to get us ready. I'm telling you, the Bible said that if you have this hope in you, you are preparing yourself every day. Every day. That's what it says. If you have this hope, you purify. Purifieth. And that means continually purifying yourself every day. That's how we're living for God. Amen. We live as a saint of God. We live in the truth. And, and uh, we, we love everybody. And we try to do the will of God. That's what the Lord expects us to do. So we are. We are purifying ourselves right now. In fact, if you're not pure, you're not going up in the rapture of the church. If you're not living right, you're not going up, I'm sorry. It's not my plan. And I'm not the one that sells the tickets. But you're going to have to have a ticket, my friend, and you're going to have to buy the right one. You're going to have to live right. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Matthew 25 and 13, Jesus said, Watch ye therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I stated this a while ago. We would know exactly when He was coming. All you would have to do would be count down from the peace pact because that's going to open up this seven-year period when, when Israel and the world signs a peace pact. You just keep your ear tuned to the radio and, and uh, listen to that fake news at times, but you just, you just stay ready um, because it's going to happen. We don't know exactly when it will happen, but there's going to be a peace pact signed. And from that time until the end of until the coming of the Lord will be seven years. We'll be three and a half years and three and a half years. We'll be 42 months and 42 months. We'll be 162, 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,260 days and 1,260 days. So we would know exactly when the Lord was coming. Amen. But we do not know that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, yes, they're getting very close to it right now. And uh, Israel wants to stop uh, the terrorism that's happening in her country. The world is wanting to stop all the terrorist attacks that are happening around the world, nation after nation, and, and uh, they want to put a stop to that. So there's, there's going to be a peace pact signed. The Antichrist will head it up. You say, well, is the Antichrist alive today? I get that question pretty often. I feel in my heart that, yes, he is alive. And he's just in the sidelines. He's just in the dressing room, just waiting for the curtains to pull back. And then he can just step right on the stage of action and implement his plan. Actually, it's the devil's plan. Because the Bible said the devil gives him his seat and gives him his authority. Uh, so it's the devil's plan. But I'm telling you, there, it's so close. It's right there. Hallelujah. As we begin... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to look at these, these promises and these prophecies, praise God, it is so very, very close. Israel's going to sign a peace pact with the world, with the Antichrist, with the promise of security and peace. That's, uh, that's what Daniel said of the Antichrist. He's coming in talking about peace. He's going to be a man that's, that's going to promise peace and security. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. We're going to see some more of that as we go along. Amen. Uh, there is a, a good example in the Old Testament even of the rapture of the church. Have you read the story of Lot when he lived in Sodom? Amen. 
uh, Genesis chapter 19, verses 21 and 22. Uh, a lot is a type of the church. The angel took Lot out of Sodom before he destroyed the city. Before. And I believe the scripture indicates that God will take his bride out before he rains judgment on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what it says, Genesis 19, 21, 22. And he said unto him, uh, to Lot, the angel said, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for, thou hast, for which thou hast spoken. That was when Lot asked to go to Zor, a little town away out of the, uh, of the valley. Now, Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything in Sodom till thou come thither, or until, uh, that's old English, until you get out of there, in other words. I cannot destroy Sodom. The judgments, all of this tribulation cannot happen until the church is gone, until the church is out of here. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 17, verse 29, about the same story, but it said that the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed all. Enoch was a type of the church, Old Testament Enoch. You remember Enoch? The Bible said in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Enoch was 365 years of age when they lived close to 900 years in those uh, times. But he was not. And he had this testimony before he was translated that he pleased God. Hallelujah. I don't know what happened to Brother Enoch, but I just suppose that one day Enoch was walking in the mountain somewhere talking to God and, and uh, the, the evening came along and, and the Lord said, Hey, Enoch. We're closer to my place than we are yours. <laughs> Why don't you just come go with me? And he took him up. Amen. He was not. Uh, Methuselah is also a type of, I don't think that's in your notes, but Methuselah, the oldest man that's ever recorded, 900 and what? 69 years. Amen. And the Bible said uh, that he died. His name means when he is gone, it shall come. So when, when Methuselah died, the flood came. In fact, it came the year that Methuselah died. And that was the flood that destroyed in Noah's time, destroyed the earth. Amen. But the Lord, uh, the Lord uh, allowed him not to go through that time. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord sent a message to the seven churches of Asia. Now these were the, those Gentile churches that I talked about earlier that existed in John's time. Seven churches in distinct uh, cities. And they also, they're projecting events that will transpire and have by history. We know that these churches have projected events that were to take place far in the future. And they did. Amen. Uh, there's just uh, one other thing yet that must take place. Praise God. But these churches projected. They had certain characteristics of the state of the church during a particular time frame. We don't have really time to go into that. That's another study all by itself. Talking about the seven churches. Amen. The church of Laodicea represents the apostate church of the end time. You know what apostate is? That's a backslidden, rebellious, amen. People who decide to go their own way because they said, we are rich and increased with goods. We have need of nothing. And the Lord said, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're poor, miserable, blind, and naked. I counsel of you to buy of me gold tried in the fire and, and I salve that you can anoint your eyes. Now, you're lukewarm. I, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's the apostate church of today. Amen. But that Philadelphia church existed at the same time. You know what the Philadelphia church uh, represents today? The true Jesus name, apostolic movement. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. A church uh, that believes in that coming of the Lord. A church that believes uh, in living for God, living right. Uh, 
Praise the Lord. It, it represents the believers of the end time right now. We are in the church of Philadelphia. All the characteristics of that church in Philadelphia, praise God, exist in the true church. Uh, this is what the Lord said concerning the church of Philadelphia. And you can just, you can just um, uh, change that name, Philadelphia, and say Wharton. Hallelujah. And this is what he said, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. What is the hour of temptation? It's talking about all of this hour, seven year period. I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon a part of the world. Is that what it said? No, it said all of the world. Well, Brother Shrek, I said, do you believe that tribulation period is going to affect every nation under the sun? Absolutely. It's going to, it's going to be global because the Bible talks about it, refers uh, many times about uh, affecting uh, the whole world. But he said, I'm going to keep you, church at Wharton, I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation, tribulation that will come upon the face of the whole world. Hallelujah. If, if I lived in this city, I would get so close to God. I'd, I'd be here every service. I'd be sitting on the front pews. Amen. I'd live for God. I'd shout the victory. I'd pray and read my Bible and fast and pray and say, Lord, I'm looking for your coming. I know you're coming and I'm going to be ready when you come. I'm going to be prepared. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. I don't want anybody to have my crown. I don't know what kind of crown I'm going to have. I'm going to have the crown of life for sure. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I fought a good fight, finished the course, kept the faith. Therefore, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, a, a crown of life. Hallelujah. But the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, not only for me, but for all those who love his appearing. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. In verse 10, I want us to, I want us to take uh, notice of that. It says, I will keep thee from. Now, if you go back into the Greek, and I know we don't have Greek scholars here. Don't expect you to be Greek scholars. But if you'll just go back into the Greek, that little word from is a preposition which means out of. It does not mean through. That's a different preposition. It's a little word in the Greek language, the original language of the Bible, ek, E-K in the Greek language, and it means uh, keep out of, or, or removed from, in other words. So that's what he's saying to the church of Philadelphia. Hallelujah. I will also keep thee from, out of, removed from the hour of temptation. Boy, it tells me that he's coming to catch away his bride. Amen. <laughs> Out of what is coming upon the face of this earth. Praise God. 2 Timothy 2, 7 to 10. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, the, the Greek rendering of that, to make it a little clearer, is only he who now hinders will hinder until he be taken out of the way. Or in other words, there is something that is holding back the advent of the Antichrist. You know what it is? It's the church of the living God. Amen. The church of the living God is holding at bay. Did not the Lord tell us that in his name we'd cast out devils, we'd tread on serpents? Amen. I'm telling you, the church has power over the devil. The church has power over demonic spirits. The church has power. And there is a, there is a hindering force. Only he who now hindereth will hinder until he be taken out of the way. And notice verse 8. Here's the key. And then, or after this, after this event, what is hindering when he's taken out of the way? 
Then shall that wicked be revealed. That's talking about the Antichrist, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. Seven years later, this is where the Lord is going to destroy the Antichrist and cast him into the lake of fire along with the false prophet. Amen. Uh, so we know that it's, it's holding him back whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's the Antichrist, the false prophet that are coming in unison and they're coming to deceive the whole world. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs and wonder and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness to them that perish because they receive not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Antichrist cannot be revealed until after the church is gone because of the power in the church. It's holding him back. It's holding him back. I'm telling you, we're, we're just so close to it and we're seeing all these, these events. They're, they're starting to, it's being prepared. The forerunners are, they're happening right now. And, and uh, you know, you, you've heard about uh, um, the, the possibility of marking every, every individual on earth. The mark of the beast. I'm telling you, just right around the corner. They've got that capability right now computerization and, and all of the modern things we've got. I'm telling you, they're just, uh, they, they, they've got uh, a little uh, chip they can insert in your body and they're already using it in pets and, and some children, I understand, and, and some um, uh, uh, workers in different plants, they have that little chip inserted in their uh, hand and uh, you know why it's in the right hand and in the forehead? Because there's more energy in your right hand and in your forehead. You take your temperature it's a little hotter on this side than it is on this side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm telling you, it, there is the possibility. So we're seeing all of these things as they're just, they're just coming together at the bottleneck of prophecy. And the Lord is saying to his church, hey, I'm coming quickly. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm getting ready to blow the trumpet. Gabriel, blow the trumpet. I'm going after my people, my child. I'm going after my church. I'm going after the saints. I'm going back after the blood bought, blood washed saints of God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be removed. And let me tell you this. Once the church is gone, all hell is going to break forth on the face of this earth. Jesus spoke, and I'll mention this again on Sunday, but Jesus spoke about this seven year period of tribulation as the worst period of time that ever had happened from the Adam and Eve all the way to the end, yeah, to that time, nor shall there ever happen a time like this after. You say, well, the tribulation is just a little old simple thing. And, oh, it's not just a little old simple thing. The whole world will be affected. Amen. Not the church. Church is going to be gone. Hallelujah. We're going to be shouting the victory around the throne of God. We're going to be casting our crowns before the throne, before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I'm so, I get so excited. Uh, my wife and I read through the uh, scriptures. We try to read them through the Bible once a year. Hallelujah. And every time we get to these scriptures and, and we start talking about it, uh, there's just a joy in the depth of our soul to know that it's going to happen. It's coming soon. It's in God's plan. And it's going to take place just soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. You know, you sing that song. Soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. Yes, we are. Hallelujah, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Hold fast what you have. Let no man take your crown. First Thessalonians 5 and 9 again, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The world is looking for the Antichrist. I'm not. I'm looking for Jesus. Amen. I'm looking for the real Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your redemption is getting closer and closer and closer. 
Praise God. Praise God. And, and when you have a desire to live for God that nothing else in this world really matters. Oh, sure, you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work because you've got to provide for your family. But down in the depth of your soul, hallelujah, there is that desire. There is that expectation that the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. It could be right now. It could be today, Lord. And I'm going to be ready when you come. I'm not going to be left behind oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and that is the question tonight knowing that his coming is so near are you ready are you ready are you ready if not what doth hinder thee it's like the Ethiopian eunuch the Spirit moved the Philip to the desert, and he was walking along there, and he came a chariot. He's the open eunuch, and the Spirit said, Join yourself to the chariot. Join yourself to the chariot. And he heard this Ethiopian eunuch reading from Isaiah chapter 53, and he said, uh, Do you understand what you're reading? He said, Well, how can I unless somebody explains it to me? And that's what the Apostle Peter did. He just started explaining it to him. Hallelujah, they came close to a body of water. He said, well, here's water. What hinders me from be being baptized? He said, you can be baptized. Nothing hinders you. And they both went down to the water. You know, one uh, ancient manuscript actually says that Philip baptized him in Jesus' name. It was kind of an obscure manuscript, but it actually said, it doesn't say that in our King James Version nor in our Reina Valera version. It doesn't say that. It just said they both went down. He baptized them. They both went up. Uh, but uh, there, is a, there is an old manuscript that says he baptized him in Jesus' name. Well, we know he did because that's the only way they, the apostolic church ever baptized was in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you obeyed the Scripture? That's what it's going to take to get your ticket to get out of here. Got to obey. And without that obedience, you say, well, what will happen to those, Brother Shrek, I said, that are not baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost? They'll just continue on living. But that old tribulation period is going to be staring them right in the face. It's going to start quickly after the church is gone, after that hindering force is removed. It's going to start happening very, very quickly because there's only a seven-year period where the devil is going to try to overthrow God, to overthrow the world, to take complete dominion over this world. He's not going to be able to. But seven years, and then it's all going to be over. It's going to be the judgments of God. But if a person is not filled with the Holy Ghost, the Apostle Paul said it like this, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the grave dwell in you, it will also quicken your mortal bodies in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll be changed. What's going to change you? The power of the Holy Ghost. If you've got the power of El Espíritu Santo, glory, hallelujah, you've got the Holy Ghost power. It's going to change you. Hey, let me tell you, if you get the Holy Ghost now, it's going to change you. <laughs> hallelujah. Not just then. It's going, to, it's going to change your way of living. It's going to change your way of talking. It's going to change your way of working. It's going to change your way of driving. It's going to change your way of every facet of your life when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I was teaching a home Bible study a few months ago, and, and uh, Brother Luis is not able to go to church. He's, uh, he's got a leg cut off and got all kinds of medical problems, and uh, so my wife and I went over uh, to Sister Lydia and Brother Luis's house, and we began to teach him uh, a Bible study. And <clears throat> on the third lesson, hallelujah, <laughs> we didn't even get through with the, with the study, but on the third lesson, the presence of the Lord moved into that living room. I just stepped over and put my hand on Brother Luis's head and began to pray. Hallelujah. Within about 30 seconds, Brother Luis received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it will change your life. It'll do something for you. It'll transform you. Hallelujah. And it'll give you a ticket to ride. It'll give you a ticket to ride. Have you played that game? 
Oh, yeah, we have to. He'll give you a ticket to ride, my friend. He'll give you a ticket out of this whole world. When he comes for his church, it's going to happen. It's coming. It's so soon. There's no time to waste. There's no time to fool around. There's no time to say, well, maybe when I get through with this particular thing in life, I'll, I'll give my life to the Lord. Maybe after I get this done and... There's not time for that. It's living for God now. Hallelujah. Living for God ready at any moment. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. I feel the power of the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Praise God. What a hope we've got in the Lord. Hallelujah. You say, well, Brother Shrek eyes, can I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight? Absolutely. Right where you're sitting, the Lord can baptize you with the Holy Ghost if you'll just throw your hands in the air and begin to worship Him. The Lord will fill you with His Spirit and you can be ready. There's water to be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be ready tonight. Be ready before you leave. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 I'm ready. You ready? You want him to come? I'm anxious for him to come. Oh, praise God. I am so anxious for the Lord to come after his church. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a joy. What a joy to know the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. What a joy. What a joy. Hallelujah. 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 That's what the song says. I feel joy when I think about what he's done for me. I feel joy when I think about what he's done for me. What has he done for? Well, he's filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's what he's done for me. What else has he done? He's given me the hope of his soon coming. That's what he's done for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Let's stand to our feet. Let's lift our hands. Let's begin to worship the Lord. Thank him for the opportunity to know the truth. Hallelujah, to be ready for his coming. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Ma, 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 ma. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you're coming, Lord. I know. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just praise the Lord tonight and give him glory. Give him honor tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready for the rapture, that imminent return of the Lord. I just feel like tonight, if you would like to come, I feel like the church ought to come.